The Country Bear Jamboree is a classic Disney attraction, and it's hard to imagine the Magic Kingdom without it. But this now iconic show was actually never meant to be in a Disney park. Its origins take us back to the time when Walt Disney planned to build an alpine-style resort tucked deep in California's Sequoia National Park. This was to be Disney's Mineral King Resort. In 1960, Walt Disney was appointed head of the pageantry committee for the Winter Olympics at Squaw Valley. He adored this role and fell in love with the snowy ski resorts for their healthy, family-friendly outdoor exercise. An earlier trip to the Swiss Alps for the production of Third Man on the Mountain had already inspired Disney to bring the Matterhorn Mountain to Disneyland in 1959. But this time, Walt wanted to take his obsession further. Following the success of the 1964-65 New York World's Fair and his announced plans to build Disneyland East, Walt Disney made another big announcement. His next large-scale project was to be a Disney ski resort. With the help of famed skier Willie Schaefer, Disney decided the project should be located within the Mineral King Basin, which was at that time a part of the Sequoia National Forest in the Sierra Nevada Mountains in Central California. This area was chosen for its large potential and dependable snow. Many others had been put off from building a ski resort here due to the single narrow unpaved road that led there, which was often impassable due to heavy snowfall. However, Walt Disney planned to build a new road to eliminate this issue and went ahead with creating his plans. In 1965, Disney was awarded a three-year permit by the US Forest Service to explore the Mineral King idea further. By the end of this permit, Walt Disney had agreed with the US Forest Service that he would build a $35 million year-round resort which would attract 2.5 million visitors annually for skiing, hiking, and ecotourism. Disney estimated the slopes could accommodate up to 20,000 skiers of all skill levels, and with the location being not too far from either Los Angeles or San Francisco, it was sure to be a great hub for alpine tourism. It had the potential to be America's greatest ski resort and a training ground for its Olympians. Following this, Walt Disney signed a new 30-year permit, part of which required the government to approve a 25-mile all-weather highway to access the resort, which would pass through the national park surrounding Mineral King. Walt placed great emphasis upon preserving the site's natural beauty and planned to allow no automobiles into the valley, building a 2,500-vehicle parking area from where guests would be taken into the valley by a high-capacity public conveyance. Like with practically everything he touched, Walt wanted to set a new standard for this industry. He was planning to build 14 ski lifts and provide year-round recreational activities for people of all ages and athletic abilities. In the colder months, winter sports would be on offer, and in the warmer months, it would attract sightseers, campers, hikers, and wildlife students. Walt planned to build a completely self-contained village with a chapel, ice skating rink, convenience shops, restaurants, a conference center, and low-cost lodging facilities. There was also to be 10 restaurants in the valley and a top surrounding peaks, two large hotels, a heliport, and auxiliary facilities. The area's natural character was to be preserved by camouflaging ski lifts, situating the village so that it would not be seen from the valley entrance, and putting service areas in a 60,000 square foot underground facility beneath the village. These techniques are not unlike those we see within the parks today, such as the Magic Kingdom Utilidors and the hidden feeding stations on the Kilimanjaro Safari at Animal Kingdom. During planning for the resort, Walt Disney asked Imagineer Mark Davis to devise an attraction to entertain visitors. Walt thought something with bears would be a good idea, as they could say they'd come out from the sequoias and been trained to entertain. 
Mark Davis was one of Disney's nine old men, the core animators who joined Disney studio in the 1930s. In 1962, Walt had asked Mark to work on Disneyland and take a look at an attraction he wasn't too happy with, Mind Train Through Nature's Wonderland. Mark used his animation storytelling knowledge and concluded that the problem with the attraction was its lack of humour. He moved animatronics around to inject comedy into the attraction and his idea was a success. From then on, Mark Davis became well known as an Imagineer for adding humour and also for his iconic characters as he was able to stage attraction scenes like he had in animated films. It was this type of entertainment Walt wanted to bring to entertain his ski resort guests. Mark Davis worked with fellow Disney animator Albertino to develop ideas about potential bear bands, including a marching band, a mariachi band, and a Dixieland band. Thanks to this, his office was covered in sketches of various bears. When Walt saw Mark Davis's sketch of Mark and Al, two bears in a country band, he burst out laughing and said he adored them. Sadly, this was the last time Walt ever spoke to Mark Davis. As Walt passed away a few days later, on December the 15th, 1966. In fact, Walt's last public appearance was at the American Forestry Association's annual conference, held October the 30th through November the 2nd, 1966, in Williamsburg, where he voiced some of his hopes for the Mineral King Resort. After his death, plans for the ski resort's attraction carried on. The bears would be featured in the resort's Bear Band restaurant show, and it was decided that they would have a country twang. There was even an audio demo created of this planned show, but while plans for the show progressed, plans for the ski resort itself did not. The first of several lawsuits against the project was filed in 1969, the same year Disney's permit was extended. In addition to this, there were petition letters to federal officials, staged hike-ins and other protests. Disney themselves cut back on the proposed plans due to the $400 million cost of Walt Disney World, which was originally expected to cost closer to $70 million, causing them to cut the ski resort's $30 million budget to $15 million. Despite this, Disney continued to fight the lawsuits and the project remained somewhat in the works until 1978, when Congress annexed the 16,200 acres of Mineral King to officially become part of Sequoia National Park, preserving it forever from commercial development and halting all plans for Disney's ski resort. Disney did attempt to move the plans to Independence Lake, but nothing much ever came of this. Whilst the ski resort was under attack, the Imagineers working on the Country Bear attraction decided it was too good to risk, not least because it was one of the last attractions approved by Walt Disney, so they moved the project to a new home, Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom, in time for its grand opening in 1971. Disney legend and Imagineer Exitensio worked with famed Academy Award winning composer George Burns to create songs for the bears to sing. The show would feature 24 audio animatronics singing 15 short songs. On October the 1st, 1971, the Country Bear Jamboree opened its doors in the Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World. It received so much positive feedback that Imagineers immediately planned to make a replica of the show to be placed in Disneyland. The Country Bear Jamboree was actually the first ever attraction to be cloned from Walt Disney World back to the original Disneyland. In 1972, a new land called Bear Country replaced the Indian Village, creating a seventh themed land for Disneyland. This became home to the Country Bear Playhouse which offered two theatres playing the Country Bear Jamboree due to the show's immense popularity in Florida. When Tokyo Disneyland opened in 1983, it too featured the Country Bear Jamboree with improved audio animatronics. During the 1984 holiday season, both Magic Kingdom and Disneyland's attractions swapped programming to become the Country Bear Christmas Special, becoming the very first Disney attraction to receive a seasonal overlay. 
Following the success of this, the Vacation Jamboree debuted in 1986, a new summer vacation themed version of the show. This included more modern country songs and music from other genres, with the hopes of making the show more popular in California, where it was not so well received. This version only lasted six years in Florida, but stayed up until the attraction closed in California. This version debuted in Tokyo in 1994, following the success of the Christmas version, which had debuted in 1988. Both versions are still performed in Tokyo Disneyland today. The bears themselves became so popular that they received walk around meet and greet characters, and they were even featured in a couple of live shows, such as Miss Minnie's Country Christmas in the Magic Kingdom. In fact, the show's Melvin the Moose had a starring role in Chip and Dale's Country Morning Jamboree at the Fort Wilderness Resort. In 1988, Splash Mountain opened in Disneyland, and Bear Country was renamed Critter Country. Sadly, the Country Bear Jamboree closed forever at Disneyland on September the 9th, 2001, just two days before the terrorist attacks on New York would freeze tourism, and just one year before the awful ride to film adaptation, The Country Bears, was released. This film lost money, and the strangely timed closure of the attraction suggests Disney knew it wasn't destined for success before it was even released. However, it was the first Disney attraction to inspire a film, which of course influenced a few more, both successful and unsuccessful attempts at attraction-inspired films in the future. In 1996, a Winnie the Pooh meet and greet had been built outside Disneyland's Country Bear Jamboree, this meet and greet proved to be even more popular than the nearby animatronic show. Therefore, when they decided it was time for a replacement, the decision between a country bear or a Winnie the Pooh dark ride was clear. Thus, in 2003, a new bear moved in and the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh dark ride opened. There are quite a few remnants of the country bears which remain in Critter Country, including the well-known Easter egg where guests can spot Buff, Max and Melvin on the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh by looking behind them as they enter the Honey Heaven scene. There are even a couple of country bear Easter eggs in Disney's California Adventure Park, including the Dolores the Octopus animatronic from Disneyland's Country Bear Vacation Hoedown, which is now located in the queue line for Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. Magic Kingdom's Country Bear Jamboree is still open, but underwent a 21st century edit in 2012, meant to tighten the show for shorter modern attention spans and to increase capacity. The bears all received shiny new skins and the show was cut down by four minutes. The Country Bear Jamboree is not the only lasting legacy of Walt Disney's planned ski resort. Much of the work Disney did to prepare to build the Mineral King Resort has had a lasting effect on the winter sport business. In the 1960s, the National Ski Areas Association refined its trail rating system based on research the Disney company did on which colours and shapes best communicated trail difficulty to skiers. It's certainly interesting to imagine just how large of an impact the Mineral King Resort would have had if it had been built. How popular would skiing be in the USA if it had been championed on television by Walt Disney? Would ski resorts be different if they had to compete with Disney Entertainment like the Country Bear Jamboree? It's hard to predict, but just like he changed the theme park industry, I reckon Walt Disney would have left a pretty big impact upon the world of ski tourism had his resort come into existence. Nevertheless, the Country Bear Jamboree remains as the lasting legacy of Disney's ski resort, having had a larger cultural impact than I'm sure Mark Davis could ever have hoped for. The Country Bears have been referenced within numerous television shows and are even credited with having inspired the animatronic music show at Chuck E. Cheese restaurants. Well, thanks for bearing with me till the bear end. Let us know your favourite Country Bear memories in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. We'd really appreciate it if you could like this video, subscribe to our channel and check out the links in the description.